us a few things about the uh, periodic table. And uh, this will this is a five minute crash course, and this with, with with this you'll learn everything you pretty much need to know about the periodic table, or or at least some of the most important things, and why it's kind of looks like a game of Tetris. Uh, you have eight groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Forget about the stuff in the middle for a minute. Uh, each each one of these groups refers to the number of balanced electrons it has uh, to react with other uh, atoms. So group one is one balanced electron. Each ad each element. Uh, in group two has two balanced electrons. Each uh, of, of the elements um, has three balanced electrons in group three. Group four has four balanced electrons. Group five has five balanced electrons. Group six has six balanced electrons. Group seven has how many? Seven balanced electrons. And group eight has, of course, eight balanced electrons. What's a balanced electron? Well, a balanced electron is like only the electrons that it uses to uh, react with other atoms to make compounds. Uh, think about it this way, like you, you use money in your wallet every day, right? But you might, hopefully, you have some money in the bank. That money to make you don't really use. It's the same thing with with atoms. You know, a, as you go uh, into heavier elements to the right and, and to the bottom of the periodic table, uh, you, you, you get the, these elements that have uh, whose atoms consist of more electrons but it, it only uses a maximum of eight okay so all of these have one all of these have two extra that it can use three four and so on that's a balanced electron and ultimately it would like to get uh, eight in its outer shell uh, and that's the octet rule like octopus right Octet equals eight, eight legs. So uh, eight inside a shell, uh, it only has a, so that means it has uh, only a few electrons to kind of like play around with. Let's uh, try an example with uh, nitrogen. Nitrogen's in group five, that's five ounce electrons, right? One, two, three, four, Five. Well, why do I draw it this way? Well, electron has dependency issues. It, it's, it likes to have buddy all the time to form what's called lone pair. All right. Uh, the, these three are very, very sad. Well, why don't these two hook up then? Well, the, the remaining balance electron needs to be evenly distributed. So that these three have to be dispersed throughout the atom. So where is each one of these going to get a buddy from? Well, let's take a look at uh, group one, since each one of these needs one buddy, right? So the one balanced electron is going to come from hydrogen. Perhaps. This hydrogen is going to donate one balanced electron here. This one hydrogen is going to get donate one balanced electron here. This one hydrogen is going to get donate one balanced electron here to make a lone pair. These guys are friends now to make a lone pair. These guys are buddies to make a lone pair. These two are very, very happy. And is the octet rule fulfilled? Well, let's see. Two, four, six, eight, and it is. There's eight balanced electrons and nitrogen's out of shell now. And uh, it's happy. Why do the electrons go from hydrogen to nitrogen? Well, it's got something to do with something called electronegativity. These are all very electronegative. Uh, electronegative. And which word do you see in the air electron, right? So, you know that these up here have more 
valence electrons on the outer shell, right? Because you go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So your electron density is going to increase up here, right? So you got electron, and that's how scientists like to write that with a cool little negative charge. It's a little uh, shorthand. So electron density is going to go up because of all those elect uh, valence electrons in the outer shell. And so all these are going to be more electronegative. Electronegativity is just a measure of uh, electron density. So <clears throat> since nitrogen is more electronegative to hydrogen, hydrogen's electron is going to be drawn to nitrogen. And uh, you can think of nitrogen as a bully, right? It's going to want to gang up on three hydrogens for each of their electrons because it, it wants to make eight. So if you draw out NH3, which is ammonia, which is what we have over here, you know the overall charge is going to be zero because it's nice and stable. Right? Although since each hydrogen lost an electron, the charge is now going to be plus one. And each, uh, and the nitrogen gained three electrons, so charge is going to be negative three. So that's why these charges cancel. Three times positive one is three, and negative three times that invisible one is going to be negative three. Doesn't make any sense? Sure it does. Remember, nitrogen is in group five, so it needed three electrons. So if it gains three electrons, now it's negative three charge, right? Hydrogen was in group one; it had one electron. To donate to the electron withdrawing group of nitrogen, which had higher electronegativity. So basically, nitrogen plucked off <clears throat> an electron from hydrogen. So hydrogen is going to be now plus one since it lost an electron. Electron is negative. So that's why you get these oxidation um, numbers here to create an overall oxidation state of zero. Let's try oxygen. Which group? Six, right? How many valence electrons? Well, you guessed it. Six. One, two, three, four, and the last two, five, six, evenly distributed throughout the atom, right? <clears throat> so, how many does it need to complete the octet? Two. One here for this guy, one here for this guy. These guys are lonely. These two are happy. Right? So, wh where is it going to get it from? Well, the easiest place to get one electron would be, of course, from the group one, which has one valence electron. And uh, let's try hydrogen. Put one here. Hydrogen is going to donate one. One here, the, another hydrogen is going to donate one electron. So now we have another lone pair here, another lone pair here. These guys are happy, these guys are happy, these guys were already happy. Does it fulfill the octet? Let's see, two, four, six, eight electrons, and it does. And again, remember since oxygen is the more electronegative atom than hydrogen, because of that high electron density surrounding it. It's going to pluck off the electron from the hydrogen. So in other words, of course, this is water, if you haven't guessed already. With an overall charge of zero since it's neutral and it's stable. Although let's look at the oxidation numbers now in this water. Well, we know hydrogen donated an electron which is negative so it lost a charge uh, it, it gained a plus one charge since it lost a negative charge right and that was for each of the two hydrogens which is reflected here now what happened to the oxygen well remember the oxygen gained two electrons right because it had remember it was in group six right so it had six in its outer shell but it wanted another two 
so it gained two electrons, so the charge is negative two. There's an invisible one right here. Negative two times one is negative two. Positive one times two is positive two. These cancel out, you get zero, and you get a nice stable water molecule. So you get water.